Hi everyone, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. As you can see, we have a very special day today. October 1st is Chuseok, and we'll learn a little bit more about that later. Before we start our show, let's look at some fabulous student art that was sent in to me. I want to say thank you to everyone for sending in your art to me. I just love seeing the art that you do. And just as a reminder, I keep my email up on the bottom corner of the screen there so that you have it at all times. So keep sending in your work. I love it. Um, for This lesson today at 3 o'clock is geared towards pre-kindergarten, transitional kindergarten, and kindergarten, or for anyone who considers themselves an early beginner with art. Stay tuned. Uh, for the 340 show and 420 shows today because that will be for the upper grades. So um, I mentioned earlier that October 1st is Chuseok in Korea and um, we have a special message from Dr. Song who is the principal at Jefferson Elementary School. Let's hear what she has to say. 여러분, 안녕하세요. Jefferson Chodonghakyo Kyojang Dr. Song Mida. Hi everyone. I'm Dr. Song, principal of Jefferson Elementary School. I am a huge fan of Simple Art at Home with Mrs. Houston. And today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about a very special Korean holiday called Chuseok. Today is a special day in Korea called Chuseok, or also known as Hangawi. It is an important traditional Korean holiday that is typically celebrated for three days. Some people call it Korean Thanksgiving. Just like we get a few days off for Thanksgiving, so it also happens for Chuseok in Korea. This year, Chuseok falls on Thursday, October 1st. However, Chuseok is always August 15th by the lunar calendar, when the moon is said to be the biggest and brightest. Chuseok is a mid-autumn harvest festival when traditionally families go to the mountains to tidy up their ancestors' graves or set up a traditional Korean table of food and bowing to their ancestors. Korea is a mountainous country, so many ancestors are buried in the mountains. After paying respects to their ancestors, they will enjoy a grand meal together using new crops. One very important essential food is called songpyeon, a steamed rice cake filled with either beans or sesame seeds mixed with honey. It is in the shape of a half moon. Another typical food is called jeon, which is like a Korean savory pancake. In some countryside villages, you may see women dancing in a circle wearing hanboks, the Korean traditional clothing under the moonlight. Happy Chuseok! 즐거운 추석 보내세요! Thank you so much, Dr. Song, for teaching me something new. I always love learning about the ways that different people celebrate different holidays. Um, thank you very much. Um, if you uh, take a look what's coming up next up here, we will be doing an art lesson about the Korean American Day um, art contest. So today we're going to be painting azaleas because the azalea flower is a favorite flower in korea and before we start this art contest i want to tell you a couple of things i've linked the website in the description of this video 
And if you just click on that website, you'll have to have a parent help you, but that's how you can enter the artwork that we do today into this art contest. And I know that every year, certain people who enter the contest get their art put into a calendar. So I think that would be really wonderful if one of our students could have their art ent entered into this um, calendar. So before we start in the lesson, I wanna give you some background information about azaleas and Korea. You will have the opportunity to submit your artwork from today's lesson to the Korean American Day Art Contest. I will tell you more about this in a few moments. Today we will be painting azalea flowers. The azalea flower is one of Korea's favorite flowers. Azaleas are wildflowers that are known for their endurance and long lifespan. Kim Sowal is a beloved Korean poet, and he wrote a very famous poem called The Azaleas. The poem touches on several feelings, including love and sadness. The azaleas may be a metaphor for resilience during hardship. This is how you write the word azaleas in Korean Hangul lettering. I will teach you how to do this during today's art lesson. If you would like to enter the Korean American Day Art Contest, then you will need to follow the directions that you see here. Ask a parent to help you. The website is linked in the description of this video. Your artwork will need to be mailed to the Korean Education Center in Los Angeles. Everyone is invited to participate in the art contest. The due date is Tuesday, October 13th. Let's do some art. Okay, so for today's art lesson, you are going to need some paper and a pencil and something to color with or paint with. I'm going to be using uh, watercolor paints today. And uh, you may or may not want a black pen for outlining or a black color pencil or a black crayon. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the art lesson today will be geared towards early beginners. Uh, this will be pre-kindergarten, transitional kindergarten, and kindergarten. So I'm going to show you how to draw very simple, basic flowers. And again, tune in a little bit later on if, if you want, if you're an upper grader and if you want a more advanced lesson. I always have three shows on Thursdays. So I'm using a combination of Crayola watercolors, and today I'm also using um, Dr. Martin's watercolors because I can get a little more vibrant um, color with these. So I'm just going to put some right here in my watercolor painting ceramic dish. And then I will also use, and that color was fuchsia, and I'm also going to use sunshine yellow for parts of our azalea flower. And I have to think thank my co-worker and my friend, Mrs. Joy Park, because she taught me how to write the word azalea in Hangul lettering. So I'm gonna teach you that as well. So we're going to start, I'm just going to get some water on my brush, and we're just going to make um, some basic uh, flower petal shapes. Now with this particular lesson, I'm not going to draw first with pencil. I usually do, but I'm not going to with this lesson. I'm just getting my my paper a little bit wet here. Sometimes it's better not to start with really dry paper. And let's see if this how this color looks straight out of the bottle. So I'm just going to do a petal shape like this. Okay, that gives me an idea. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit because I just remembered I want to start with some little black dots in the center. So if you have a black crayon or a black pen, we're going to keep this one very, very simple. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five. Those are just some simple black dots. And you know what? While I have this brush out. I'm going to do another flower over here. I'm 
but these are kind of um, free form. And by free form, I mean just loose and free flowing. Like I said, I'm not using a pencil. And then I'm also going to take some yellow. Maybe try a little bit of yellow here too. So I'm putting some mixing yellow dots in here as well. This will be the center of our flowers. Azalea flowers can be pink to purple to a fuchsia, like bright purpley pink colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna keep going. I wanna make sure that I bring this a little closer. There we go, that beautiful color. So I'm going to create five petals. And if you think of like the shape of a star, I'm going to have another petal come out over here. I'm gonna get it close, but not touching my little dots. And see, it's just a very loose, simple form. I'll make another one over here. It's okay, especially if you're using watercolors, just let the watercolors go where they want to go. Sometimes, like, see that right there? They run into the other color, but I think that's part of the beauty of watercolors. I'm gonna just bring this out a little bit. I'm making a little wiggly edge on the end of the petal. I'll make another one over here. Your, your flowers can have five or six, but it's up to you. Now I see that I have a big space here, so I might want to adjust the thickness at the base down here. I might make this one a little wider. Feel free to go ahead and do that. Sometimes you do that when you're not, when you don't draw, especially when you're not using a pencil first. There we go. I'm going to go through and Kind of sharpen the edges on this one. Okay, see how simple that is? It's just kind of the suggestion of a flower. I'm going to decorate these two. These will be smaller. You can kind of practice if you want first. If you want to mix colors together, you can mix some purple if you want. My goal is to create five petals, but if you have one more, that's okay too. And maybe the petals are curving. See that? They can curve in different directions. Take one more over here. I'm using a flat brush with the flower petals. Okay, see how simple that is? But sometimes very simple art can be beautiful. I'm gonna make this one. Really, you know, this is your project. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. My goal is to just give you ideas. Just, you know, maybe spark an idea for you in your, in your creative mind about what you might want to do for your project. And I'm just, I'm just free flowing with these petals. Just very simple, delicate shapes. They don't all have to be the same. In, in fact, I think these uh, flower petals look better if they're all a little bit different and you know that they are a little um, organic in that way. Okay. Now I'm gonna give these a little time to dry and I'll add some more, but 
I'm going to, at this point, shift to writing down here. We're going to write um, Azalea in the Hangul alphabet. So if you want to write along with me, and remember, you can pause this video at any time. Even though I'm live streaming, you can pause and I will still be right here. So if you need to go back and watch me do something again, you can do that. So we're going to have three sections here. So, you know, think in your mind, you're going to want to space for three. So um, first, we're going to make a lettering that looks like this. Okay, and I'm going to leave a little space. And for this, I'm using an, a, a fine point Sharpie. You can use any color that you want. A line that's going straight up and down. Okay, so we have one, two, and then the last part will be over here. Just leaving a little spacing. These lines are going up and down. Okay, so that says Azalea. If you're using paints also and you feel like they're too wet, you can, you can dab the paints dry with a paper towel. Um, I think mine is okay to move on. I'm going to add with my Crayola paint. Let's see. Let me get some fresh water. It's always good. I keep two, two glasses of water for painting nearby because, especially if you're using strong colors, I'm going to take some green. And this is something that I hadn't planned on doing. It's kind of a last minute decision. But I'm just going to do a little quick suggestion of a stem. Not any, I'm not going to draw leaves. I'm just keeping it very simple. There we go, I think that's pretty. There. And now, I think I would like to add a little bit of blue. But what I'm going to do first, hmm, let me take this paint off a little bit. I'm gonna wet the corners of my paper with water just water only because I'm just going to add some soft blue shading. There we go. Let's see how this how this looks. And we're just going to kind of blend this in and let it fade out a little bit. Now if you feel like you want a more um, difficult lesson You'll want to tune back in at 340. And at 340, you'll want, to, or you know, 335 or so, and you'll want to refresh your screen. If you're, you know, when you're waiting on YouTube, you have to refresh it so that you'll see my next live stream. So, like I said, I always do three lessons, and they're kind of like, they're divided up from, you know, begin beginner, intermediate, advanced. But, you know, you may see on my titles that I have grade levels associated with the art lessons. But, you know, grade level does not always match artistic ability. You know, maybe a sixth grader would really enjoy this lesson and there's nothing wrong with that and maybe a kindergartner would enjoy the advanced lesson. So just remember that you can watch any lesson that you want. I'm going to turn my paper around. You see that? Just the subtle blue along the, the bottom of the paper. I think it really makes the pink or the fuchsia color pop. I really enjoyed that message today from Dr. Song. She taught me something new. I, I did not know that 
October 1st this year was Trusak. I did not know at all. And I, as I said before, I truly do love learning about um, different cultures and different holidays. I think, you know, it makes us all more um, well-rounded people and it, it allows us to appreciate um, different people more when we learn about different holidays. So I think it's really important and it helps us um, have an appreciation and respect for all different types, all people. Okay, so here I've added some blue here. Just, it's very subtle as you can see. Okay. And you know, if you were somebody who wanted to go in and add more detail, you could. You could outline with black, um, you could put little dots. In fact, let me show you. I originally had a project like this planned, um, but then I decided to make it even simpler. But as you can see here, I outlined with my black pen. I put some dots along the center and drew the different parts of the azalea in the middle. So um, again, I think this is beautiful just on its own like this. Some, as I said before, sometimes very simple art can be very beautiful. This is more illustrative with the, the black pen. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed um, I hope you enjoyed learning about trusak and azalea flowers. Um, again, um, this is for an art contest. So remember, you can do whatever you want. And there's a link in the description of this video. It's called um, the 2021 Korean American Day Art Contest. And I'm just here to give you some ideas. You don't have to paint azalea flowers. It's completely up to you. So I hope you enjoyed learning about this lesson and I will meet you back up at the easel. Okay, so here is my finished product and I thank you so much for doing art with me today. And I encourage you to submit your work to the art contest that you see right there on the screen. And also, if you submit your work, also send me pictures of your art because I do love seeing your art. Before we go, I'd like to look one more time at the wonderful student art that was sent in. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.